Now, let us begin the panel discussion. This panel discussion focuses on the directions and challenges addressed in the keynote presentation. We are grateful to have Dr. Yi Ryong Jung, Chief Director of Division of Future Innovation Strategy Steppy as moderator. And we have four panelists here, and Dr. Hisuk Lee, Representative Patent Attorney of Siwon, like intellectual property firm, and Dr. Jason Jung Hwe Gu, Senior Managing Director of LB Investment, and Se Myung Yoon, Director, Ministry of SMEs and Startups. Also, Dr. Jim Philip, Science and Technology Policy Analyst of OECD, is waiting for us online. Please welcome moderator Dr. Jung and panelists to the floor and give them a big hand. Good afternoon, I'm Il Young Jung and the Chief Director of STEPI. Uh, I'm the moderator of today's symposium. Uh, I'm very honored to be here in STEPI Global Symposium and I look forward to an uh, in-depth discussion with the distinguished speaker and panelist. Uh, we, we are providing simultaneous interpretation, so from now on, I will be moderating in Korean. Thank you very much. We are going to kick off our panel discussion. I'll be speaking in Korean. We have heard the three presentations by three speakers. Quite impressive. Following the presentation, we'll now kick off the panel discussion. As it was already introduced, once again, let me introduce the panel discussion joining us today. On my left, we have with us Representative Peyton Otoni, Yi Hee-suk from Siwon Intellectual Property Firm, Senior Managing Director Koo jung hye from LB Investment. We have with us Dr. Jim Phillip from OECD Science and Technology Policy Analyst, and he's connected via online. Welcome. 네, 그리고 last but not least, we are joined by Director Yoon Se-myung from Ministry of SMEs and Startups. Thank you. So, we are discussing under the theme of the future of everything, the bioeconomy from startup. And to meet with the theme, we have allocated ample time for a panel discussion. So I hope that we can have a discussion for the second round. And if time allows, we also would like to open the floor so that we can even discuss in a specific sector because biosector is such a huge sector. So let me pose a question to each discussant. And after answering the questions that I raised, if you'd like to add a few more comment, please raise your hand. Then I will give the floor to you. First of all, the first round, here comes my question. We, before we talk about the future of the bio venture ecosystem, we need to think about the past and the present status. So here comes the first question. You heard the presentation by three speakers. So please give a comment. And my first, first question goes to Senior Managing Director Koo jung -hye. So you have been working for quite a while for, as a venture investors, if there is a first generation and a second generation of bio ventures, is there any differences between the two generation or issues between the two different generation? Can you summarize on that? So from the perspective of venture capital, bio firm generation, the generation should be based on the IPO in Korea because there is a company called Bionia in Korea and Crystal Genomics, Regokim, these companies would be the company who did IPO already and that was very difficult because back then uh, their sales were quite minimal and you know by a company they spend a lot and make nothing so it was very difficult for them to do IOP back then but Many people for the first time took the risk and we used, utilized the technology kind of rating scheme. Back in 2015, the government introduced this new concept and five companies made a success IPO through this new scheme. So that would be the first generation companies. And from 2010 or 2012, the, we, we, have, we started to see more diversity in company. Uh, medical devices, synthesis biomedics, and also antibiomedics and antibodies, 
And the difference between the first and second generation company would be that in case of first generation, technology and license out were not very common. So they are solely relying on the sales of the products and the local markets as well. Patent issue, technology issue were not that big issue back then because back then they enjoy a special scheme and they did an IPO based on their technological innovation. So like I said, it was quite challenging and difficult and they took a lot of risk. And many people, th there were many analysts who did a review on Bioform before 2010, but the duration of the investment was between three to five years back then. So, you know, on average, from the beginning up until IPO, buy a company usually take at least over 14 or 15 years. So five to 30 to five duration of the fund were too short for them to do the right exit. So we had a lot of bio specialized analysts in the market, but they left the market because it was not viable. That was the case of the first generation. But for the second generation, they were more, how would, how would I say, rather globalized because licensing our model kind of settled in the market. So that licensing our model the best example would be the Hanmi Pharmaceuticals license out. They did, did a licensing out to the multiple company at the same at the same time. So people started to recognize the importance of licensing out strategy. And actually, back in that, Japan Takeda the only was the only company who adopted this model. But non-clinical and clinical or third phase clinical data of Korean companies started to earn trust and they did some licensing in. So data credibility started to kind of got improved in Korea. So licensing out does not happen overnight because you need to go through all the clinical tours to see the evidences and so whether there is any human error, no human errors to decide the licensing out deal. So given that the second generation is more global in nature, diversity, globalization, and clear business model would be the characteristic of the second generation. Back in 2017, there were 11 companies and the size of the licensing out was 1 trillion, but now the size increased double fold. And in total, the amount of the licensing out increased up to several trillion dollars, so increased a lot. 네, 감사합니다. Thank you. First generation and second generation, we are dividing that and also you have categorized the features of the first and second generation. After categorizing that, strategy for patent is more important than ever before. So let's give floor to patent attorney Lee Hee Suk. This is, of course, our presumptions. And please let us know about the past and the present. What should be our investment strategy? Has there been any change? Yes. Frankly speaking, senior managing director talked about the first generation during that time. I've been working as a patent attorney for more than two decades. And 20 years ago was the time that I just started working as attorney. IPR, global license, those of concept didn't even exist. And how much patent applications you do and to which so society should you submit the articles if you have patent that is great if not then it's okay so that was the status and you talk about the second generation or bio generation boom or right around that time we suddenly adopted the issue of the ip r and d and investment on the ip R and D has also drastically increased, and each government ministries have also received budget, and they have invested in the IP R and D, and they have applied for the patent, and they found that which area is a vac vac vacuum, and where they need to come up with the strategies to fill the gap or vacuum. So that must be included within their strategy. And in case of the bio venture, they usually do that for a small size company. In case of the pharma, a big companies within their companies internally, they invest it and then they make sure to receive IP R and D and a mega scale R and uh, mega by your company, they made sure to review. So these are the major differences between the first and second generation. So as a part of that, especially the public technologies 
and also you talk about licensing out to buy the private companies is frequently done but if you go to academia or research institute they have huge pool of talent and also technology they're trying to commercialize their technology and in relation in relations with the ip r d they make a lot of investment if you go to korean government r d investment total amount you heard the keynote address but we belong to the top tier company top tier countries they make huge investment in the bio r d as of 2021 you ha you can see this public data about 15,000 uh, IP R&D technology investment was made. So it was the first time that we exceeded the 10,000 threshold. So quantitative wise, we have drastically increased the IP R&D investment. However, although we have achieved quantitative growth in terms of the global technology transfer, 0.7% in 2019, but it actually reduced to 0.4%. So quantitative growth was achieved and re received a lot of investment. So direction is right. We are going to the right trajectory. However, when we make an investment, we are not paying attention to the qualitative area. So we need to make sure to pour our attention more to achieve qualitative growth so that our investment can be done in that way as well. So the speakers from Postco already mentioned about that. The bi bioenergy or bio sector, unless we enter into the global market, success is not guaranteed. Not only the bio sector, but also other sector need to be converged. Technology is rapidly developing in this era without entering into the global market. The ecosystem in Korea or the industrial development will not be possible. So it's extremely important. We need to go that way. If so, from the early stage, how can we for example, there's a technology that we have developed. How can we commercialize or globalize the technology? And then we should start from there. We need to transfer the te technology and then make sure that it continued to be IPRND. We need to systematically and organize this. And that's what we need. Thank you so much for your comment. Listening to your comment, I had one curiosity because you said that we had gone through the qualitative growth and qualitative growth is the growth we need to pursue from now on. So transition from the quantity into quality. Given that, is there any bottleneck in terms of patent application? So do you have any views on that because you're working on the ground? So is there any bottleneck you witnessed? I think that uh, from my point of view, like you just you said, Korea, when we establish IPO R&D, when the new project comes at the national level, putting all the corporate level besides, the government gives the project whose duration is between three to six months. But when you apply the patent, professors and university First, need to write a uh, papers and make a conclusion, and they send the conclusion to us. And we don't know when the publication will be done, and they gave us the publication in short notice. So it is very difficult for us to kind of forge a tactic for their patents because this is such a short notice. And also in Korea, when it comes to IPO, especially when it comes to IPO application. They invest very small for the IPO, I mean, patent application. And with that small amount of money, you cannot make a success at the, on the global stage without putting a lot of effort on a patent. Of course, you cannot apply patent to every technology, but you need to be very selective and find out some uh, amount of technology that needs the initial investment with substantial, substantial initial investment. So if you see the description in Korea and outside of Korea, the number of the claims and the number of pages are so much different. So this is a reality that I can really resolve within short period of time. For example, in the US, you focus just one or two period of time and put everything into it and make like a book. And also definition is very critical when it comes to the Commonwealth or US law. So they need to start all the beginning from the definition and do the search of the priorities and expand ideas from there. So it takes a lot of time. But in Korea, that kind of practice is not common unless the company strategically make an investment into the patent application is 
almost impossible. So, like I said, you need to select the few of your technology which are promising for a patent application. Technology has made of us advanced a lot in Korea, and like I said, we grew a lot in terms of quantity. So, a transition into quality now needs to happen. So. Like I said before, when you write a description and create a patent strategy, you need to put a lot of effort from now on. I believe this is the right time for us to do so. Thank you. So, to confirm once again, Senior Managing Director Gu jung hae the investment strategy mentioned by Lee Hee Suk, what is your take on that? Do you believe that now is the time to respond? What is your take on? Can you elaborate? So, as a third-party perspective, to explain my background, I was a semiconductor engineer, and back in 1970, I invested into the parts and equipment areas and material areas, especially in the field of heavy industries. And from 2017, I joined the BioFront made by the Ministry of Science and ICT, or Chungbuk Changjo. Chungbuk a Creative Innovation Innovative Fund made by the municipalities of the Chungbu region, the local region in Korea. So we invested in the, into that kind of ecosystem like investment. So back at from back then I uh, witnessed the growth of the ecosystem from the very beginning as a, how should I say third party or bystander or and back then I was surprised that Doctorate degree holders earns less than the other people, and I want to know why. Because they said that there is no large farms, uh, bio companies back then. Samsung Bio and Celtrion were the only large scale company, and they boosted the average salary level. But back then, the salary of the doctorate degree holder in the field of bio was between just 40 or 50 million Korean won. So they are very much less paid than those who have a doctorate degree in semiconductor area. So I thought that this was quite challenging. Also, bio data, uh, bio industry is all about data. So you need to make the powerful data set, as you saw in the example of Hama Pharmaceutical back in 19, uh, 2000, early 2000. But if you see the patent application of them, like I said, the quantity is always important. So whether you produce one of high quality, one one paper of high quality, or two papers of less quality, you get more if you produce two papers. And also, when we talk about the cost issue, or especially the patent cost issue, they always say that it is quite too costly because one patent application costs at least ten million won back then. And the one CEO says that, where do I need to contact to do the patent application? And I said that you need to go to the very famous UA patent firm, because as a known expert, the company is ready to do the licensing, licensing out, and the patent claims of the documents, I mean, the description has been designed by a specialist and it takes at least one month to fully design and write out the patent application form and you need to compete with many rivals in the market so you need to write, make a right tactic so if you want to reduce your cost into the patent application, the loss will be larger in the end than the gain so I told the CEO that you should not save anything on the patent application and you should not save any money on clinical and non-clinical studies because if you do so you will face a failure and that will make larger loss so investors also have, have been used charles river which is one of the most costly laboratory back then because we knew the importance of the quality when it comes to patent application so like I said, bio patent is a knowledge knowledge based by bio businesses. So you need to pay fair amount of money to get a high quality outcome. So all the technology evaluation likewise should be done in a high quality manner. That's why you need to invest the human resources you need 
instead of just putting 10 to 20 million, you need to increase the amount to 40 to 15. When you apply IND to the authority, it takes millions of dollars in the US, but it is just a fraction in Korea because the companies want to save the money for the application. But IND application is a life or death issue. So technology evaluation and IND application should be done in a highest quality possible manner. So like the patent officer said, we should not save any money into this kind of area. So transition from the quality into quantity, I mean, from quantity into quality now needs to happen and need to pay a fair amount of money to the professional services instead of thinking how to save money in those professional areas. Thank you. Well, knowledge service, yes, it requires abundant investment. It is extremely important strategy to implement right now. Next, we'd like to invite Dr. Jim Phillips from OECD, and I'm sure that you have your own perspective regarding bioventure, and in order to grow in relations with the bioventure infrastructure is extremely important. I believe that he has prepared presentation. Please begin. So let me give you the presentation on infrastructure and, and international aspects as I was asked to do. So let me first of all uh, share my screen on this and this one here. I hope you can see it. Can you see this one? Oh, yes. So I, I, I try now to bring it there. There we go. Okay. So. Uh, first of all, a little bit about infrastructures and then some of the international aspects about bioeconomy. Now, uh, the, my area, I come from a, a little bit of a different perspective in that um, I look at the bioeconomy in a much wider uh, aspect and specifically I don't look so much at the pharmaceutical side. I look at sort of industrial biotech, um, a synthetic biology for different types of products, uh, mostly uh, sort of a higher value added intermediate value. Um, so let me have a look first of all at the infrastructure and then we'll touch a little on some of the international aspects. So we had a workshop in Imperial College London in 2018 where we gathered together some experts to look at um, uh, this whole issue of engineering biology as we were calling it at the time, synthetic biology. And, and, and sorry, I have an echo here, yeah. Um, so there is, um, we, at the time, everybody was referring to synthetic biology and engineering biology is seen to be roughly the same, um, roughly the same term. And now we have thrown into the equation the term biomanufacturing, uh, which is for us, the engineering or synthetic biology part is the design phase and the, the biomanufacturing is the scale up phase. So at the time we were saying that, that, that biotechnology takes too long, costs an awful lot and fails very often. Let me stress, this is not medical. This is not medical aspects. This is some of the in other industrial areas. And there are some reasons we, we, uh, we found at that workshop. There's a lack of standards, a lack of reproducibility and reliability. Uh, the complexity in, bio in biology necessitates a transition from data poor science to a data rich science. And this is actually what's happened since the Human Genome Project. And that refers to some of the comments uh, by the other uh, uh, panelists here, well, specifically about workforce. Now, we see the need for a transition from a workforce based on science to a, a workforce based on, on engineering uh, and manufacturing. And that's a very difficult translation. Um, so the, this idea that the, the embrace of the engineering design cycle, whereas biologists were trained in OFAT or one factor at a time, that's not how the engineering world works. Automization, sorry, automation and digitalization take out human error and the whole area needs its own high level programming uh, to make this um, uh, easily uh, uh, suited to integration. Um, and there is now quite clearly a need for uh, uh, curation and, and storage as the amount of data ramps up. So this is uh, this final thing is where there is a there's a need for a, a very very rapid rethink of skills and education, not just about PhDs, but across an entire new workforce. So. Where was the gap? We said in the infrastructure, where is this gap? And we, we, we settled on the, bio, the public biofoundry, 
because there were relatively few private ones around at the time. And we said, is this biofoundry the missing link? Because in the biofoundry on the left is the area where you can do design. And on the, the right is where uh, the actual uh, scale up is done. So this is a paradigm of engineering is the separation of design from manufacture. The design can happen anywhere, as we know, uh, uh, in, in engineering, uh, and the manufacture is it can be in a, a totally separate place. So this, we said, is one of the areas that's missing, and we need uh, internationalization and a spread of the diffusion of the idea of the public biofoundry. So let's take a look at the example from the United Kingdom, uh, where they were lucky early, and I would say that the United Kingdom is in second place in engineering biology just now. So public investment, uh, the bullet point number four, of about £350 million, pounds, that's a relatively large investment in, uh, in research facilities for the United Kingdom. And they created five biofoundries around the country and six basic research centres with one industrial translation, uh, translation centre based in London. Now, these five biofoundries were smartly designed. For example, the one in, in Edinburgh uh, looks at mammalian cells, Manchester looks at chemicals, Norwich looks at, at food, uh, chemistry, and Cambridge uh, is looking at plants. So the idea is that they're not repeating each other, that they're all, they're all specialising in, di in different areas. So even, even back then, we were seeing this, re this relatively large leverage of public investment by the, uh, the formation in relatively small country of uh, quite a large number of these synthetic biology companies. So here's another U UK example. As this is the, the Centre for Process uh, Innovation, and uh, they pride themselves in going from litre to 10,000 litre in fermentation. And the idea is that, that a startup comes along here, the startup doesn't waste its money trying to design a bioprocess. For a start, they're not good at it because uh, they, it's not what they've been trained in. They've been trained in DNA, for example. So this, is, this facility is staffed by chemical process people and they will design the bioprocess for those SMEs. And, and therefore it's a case of um, the, the, the companies get it done at a, a premium price. But also, look at, if you look at the last bullet point here, this is very important. It means that every time they do a project in the centre, it's adding to the knowledge of the country and it builds this national capability. So it's a win-win for the startups and for the, uh, for the, for the large uh, centre, publicly funded centre, I might add. So uh, I look at the, in the United States, it's a, it's a kind of different proposition. The Agile Biofoundry in California acts almost like a cluster. It attracts uh, industries in and they have different forms of uh, collaboration with the uh, public biofoundry and it's usually based on some sort of IP relationship. We've had uh, already a lot about the, uh, the importance of IP in these areas. So this is smart, pragmatic uh, uh, US uh, policy to centre uh, the uh, engagement of industry with a public biofoundry based on some IP issues. Now, this is one from Europe, and this is a, quite a different idea. Uh, and the basis of this one, this is the, in, the Industrial Biotechnology and Synthetic Biology Accelerator. And the idea here is that um, the different uh, 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 pieces of equipment are scattered around Europe but they're connected digitally so that you might design an experiment in Portugal, say, and you, you uh, uh, conduct the experiment in a different country. So the idea here is it's shared uh, capability, and this democrat uh, democratizes in the sense that the, 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 it's not left to some of the big elite uh, universities. So this is an idea of being able to um, spread the uh, or diffuse technologies and to do it by a uh, by digital connection. So international aspects, uh, looking at bioeconomy strategies, there are now about 50 of those that started out from 2012, I guess, uh, with the US and the European Union bioeconomy strategies. They all have different agendas. They all treat uh, different sectors uh, to, uh, to lesser or more degree. For example, the United States has a large 
uh, focus on healthcare. In Europe, that's not the case. That they, it's the uh, the focus of the bioeconomy strategies are in different areas or chemicals, materials, uh, industrial biotech, fermentation, but not specifically healthcare. So if we look at these uh, different, I, I did this work a couple of years ago, and on the vertical axis, you see the number of times that this word appears per page of the National Bioeconomy Strategy. So what you're seeing here is that since sustainability is right through there, in all of these bioeconomy strategies, people are talking about being sustainable. And biotechnology is represented, but not so highly, and synthetic biology is in just a small number of these bioeconomy strategies. Uh, and I think there are, there are reasons in Europe especially why that is the case. If you look at the EU 2012 and EU 2018 at the far right hand side, you'll see that the emphasis on biotechnology changed in those six years to, to, to much less uh, emphasis on biotech. So the UK strategy is a good one to look at because this is a bioeconomy strategy where we see biotechnology and synthetic biology at the forefront, and that's relatively uncommon. It's very common in the, for, for the United States and the UK, but it's not so emphasized in other bioeconomy strategies. Two of these new public uh, alliances, uh, public private uh, uh, partnerships, the, um, the Engineering Biology Research Consortium, in the, uh, based in the United States, but it's actually international, and you can see there that it covers all of these sectors because that's, in it, that's what the bioeconomy was set up to do with all sectors. And they have a very detailed industry uh, engineering biology roadmap, not a government uh, um, roadmap, but a very detailed industry one. And this Global, global Biofound Alliance is what we wanted to see. And if you look at the next one, this was uh, how this has started we see these public biofoundries springing up across the world, and especially the first uh, keynote today mentioned the, the key role of uh, globalization, and, and, and we have to talk to in all countries. So this is the start of this idea of the public biofoundry as a, an international phenomenon. And it's kind of very important now, and I'll leave you with this slide here, um, for the formation of the world's largest trading bloc. Uh, in, in, in your part of the world. So, thank you for your time, and I'll, and I'll stop sharing now. Thank you so much. He talked about the biofoundry, which is a core infrastructure in the biopharmaceutical industry and bioindustry. And he also summarized the biopharma-related strategies of many countries. As a last question for the first round of discussion, I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Yoon. So, is there any... Can you share your take on the past and present of the bio industry or the current issues you want to share with the audience? Uh, yeah. Hello everyone, I'm Director Yun Se Myung, working at the Ministry of SMEs and Startups in charge of technology innovation policy. A lot of in-depth discussions and also quite uh, in a grave manner, we are addressing the current issues. Well, I'm in charge of SMEs and startup, and I am not specializing the bio sector, but today's participation gave me a chance to review the current status of the bio industry. Upon listening to the presentation by three speakers, once again, there were some thoughts appearing in my mind. About 10 years ago, the first time when we launched it, KIPS, the model itself actually came from Israel because together with the Director General of the Israel, we have exchanged our views and we didn't even have the concept of AC, but when we met with the people in charge of the incubating the companies, we visited and my venture, I still vividly remember, and they played the role of the AC venture cluster. And what was unique is that there were around more than 40% of the bio venture firms located in that area. And also they were doing a lot of concentrated work. One of the most representative case is through incubations. There were successful cases like Protalix. Those were representative cases. And it plays the role of the anchor company nowadays, which means that the startup ecosystem in Israel has also improved exponentially. We saw two things, the existing tips, existing startup process, 
about 500 million in two years, the process, the traditions we witnessed. The second, bio industry was also specialized at that time, and about $2.3 million of the special allocated fund was given for a long time, and uh, also it requires a mega scale infrastructure. That is why the bio industry requires huge seed money. So that was the comment by the Israel government. So we were very impressed with ecosystems. And since 2013, we started operating the TIPS program. We couldn't do it overnight. So we started bits and bits. And as much as possible, we thought that we will add bio industry as a bio tips. And that actually started from this year. So the name actually is Big Tech, but about 1.5 billion uh, once in three years can be provided. Now, the stand time we have with us, SVP, uh, sorry, we have Park, and he is the one who started this bio tips. He used to work at the Ministry of SMEs. And when we hosted an event where the minister joined, and we, he was the one who insisted that we need to build a separate and independent department or divisions within the ministry, which is in charge of the startup. Now, AI-based new drug discovery. I'm sure that stand time has experienced many ups and downs. And I'm not only talking about bio industry, I'm talking about the multinational companies that started as a venture firms or startup companies, which have a lot of concerns and also difficulties. And Mr. Park Sun Jin from Postco Holdings is a company, is a company that takes initiative and has come up with the numerous models. We get a lot of inspirations from Postco Holdings and also we keep comparing that. We, when we build the Tips Town, uh, Postco was the one that built the first town there and it also became a huge town and there were a lot of successful stories. So based on this models that are clustered within the bio industry. Also, about 27% of the companies that are residing here is a bio industry, which is quite similar numbers. Of course, we talk about the baby unicorn or a prospect unicorns. We try to select these companies and then we are trying to fund them so that the seed money can be a foothold so that they can take a leap into the future. Most of them are bio industry and it receives a lot of venture funding and I'm sure that from the market is getting attention as well. Frankly speaking, last month with the president of Republic of Korea, we had a meeting in Boston. You know that Boston is known as the cluster of the bio. We had Korea US bio cluster meeting where we invited experts. We had a closed door meeting and a lot of detailed discussions were exchanged. We are currently reviewing how we are going to reflect those discussion results back to the policy setting. The reason why we are dynamically trying to think about that is because the bio ecosystem is changing and also the directions of the Korea bio industry needs to be reset. So all of these are considered when we try to come up with the policy. We also look for statistics and unfortunately there are very few statistics to represent the objective current status of the bio industry. We don't have the exact data or precise data, but still we can look at the bio boutique or other data and in a multi-level, there are documents or statistics that we can refer to during the past two decades. Globally, the bio or pharma industries, the value of the company or capitalizations have been quadrupled, especially if you look at the automotive industry or semiconductor industry, which are the core engine of Korea. The size of the bio market is much bigger than that of the bio industry. So bio industry are led by the United States and the portions that U.S. is taking is increasing more and more. So once again, uh, compared to semiconductor or, or automotive industry, bio industry is much, much bigger. So when you think about identifying the future growth engine, bio industry is the answer. But big diving deeper into this market, 
Of course, uh, it cannot be very objective, but according to the data, the big pharma, Pfizer, Eli Lilly, Novartis, or these are regarded as big pharma, their portion have decreased. In the past, it was like 80%, but now it's around 50% only. In the meantime, Chinese pharma have increased 20 years ago it was merely 22 percent but now it accounts for 15 percent and korea's portion has also increased by more than double definitely during the past five years it increased by double which means that it is now accounting for about two percent which is quite meaningful but if you look at japan it's not that big rather it is retracting especially what you need to take note of that is a biotech company's growth. Of course, when we talk about the global market, it includes not only biopharma, but also the biotech, the value chain itself. But if we segment biotech without looking at the brand itself, just looking at the biotech startup companies, their portion was less than 5% 20 years ago, but now it's more than 7% out of the total market. And considering the distribution is also quite huge. And if we look at this market, Korea is regarded one of the top five biotech. Of course, U.S. is number one in an absolute number to be followed by countries like China and if we consider biotech, there are countries like Denmark, Netherlands, and then Korea. So Korea is one of the top five in big tech in the global market. So we need to look at biotech market as a great opportune market, especially China is stepping a little bit backward and that means a new opportunity is unfolding ahead of us. What's important is a biotech cluster we need to build in order to achieve great growth. This is our concern. So we need to think about the comprehensive bio cluster strategy in light of that. There were many proposals made today, and not only the current status, but also the future directions. And also, we need to think about the overhaul. And the theme of today is the future of everything, the bioeconomy from startup, which is very timely. And also, we need to in a multi-level way, think about the strategy for the future. And so sorry for speaking here and there, but thank you for listening. Thank you so much for sharing your thought. Maybe a few years later, Mr. Yoon will come into this step once again, and we did and talked this and this and made this much of progress two or three years later, I hope. And Mr. Yoon lastly talked about the importance of biocluster and the potential of the growth of Korean biotechs. So let us have a second round of discussion on these issues. So future direction of bioventure firms. So I'd like to give the floor to Ms. Lee first. Actually, venture firm ecosystem should be as strong as possible. And in order to make it happen, we need to have more sophisticated patent strategies. So what would be the key consideration the company needs to have? What would be the possible rooms for improvement? And what are the key points? Uh, this. Well, frankly speaking, when we say biotech or biotech doesn't include biotech company, but it's a convergence because convergence is the key word and AI is included. And because of convergence, without convergence technology, we cannot talk about biotech. Instead of a traditional biopharma or pharma, we can hardly achieve growth. There are some limitations. We need to make sure to apply AI and converge AI technology into the pharma market I'm sure that you have read articles in the media, and this trend applies not only in Korea, but globally as well. And secondly, you know that technology is rapidly evolving, and we can hardly catch that up. And since I work in the IP sector, ChatGPT or other newly emerging technology that are appearing so quickly, technology is also rapidly increasing. So we need to catch that up uh, compared to the progress made in the technology. The policy regulations are lagging behind. 
whenever technology merges much later, legislations of the law or policies are following. The speed gap is so huge because if you look at AI, ever since it was first mentioned, unimaginable speed or unexperienced another trend is appearing. In the middle of that, we also have experienced COVID-19 pandemic. And then the vaccine, which we usually thought about the developing uh, process, now synthetic protein productions happen in an unimaginable speed and way. So the traditional pharma market, in a way, is shrinking a little bit. So I'm sure that here we need to make sure to converge AI or other synthetic technology. Without that, not only the multinational pharma company, but domestic pharma company will suffer. In light of that, Korea is IT superpowers traditionally in terms of the biotech. We have a superior edge. I'm sure that we are catching up quickly. And we have excellent company like Standime and other companies are following the suit of the Standime. In terms of IP, I'm sure you know that, but just having the data using AI, the patent cannot be acquired. You need to have the actual laboratory test result. Then you can apply for the patent. That's the trend. And we talk about the medical process, which starts with the pre-clinical trials. The data must be accumulated. And also, such a rapid AI processing technology appears using ChatGPT. If you look at two years ago, AI called Davos was included. And and I'm sure that it became a hot issue, but he filed a suit against it. AI cannot be defined as an inventor because inventor means a natural human being, not an AI. And that decision was also given by UK, not only in US. And even in Euro European Union, they have AR, AI law. And AI law actually regulates the usage and applications of the AI, and the, it will take effect in April. So the definition of AI, to what extent shall we regard AI? And we came to uh, sort of in the middle ground. Chat GPT, we are not excluding that. And it's not actually include that, but we left it as a with a great flexibility. If you ask expert about the AI coming up with invention, uh, they are doing a survey by US ITO, IPO. So the result will be given soon. And in Korea, we are trying to revise the evaluation criteria and also examination criteria since last year. We are trying to get feedbacks from the experts and trying to modify the current regulations. But as you know, from the positions of the policymaker, we cannot lag behind, but other development happens so rapidly. It is better not to be two steps behind, but rather one step behind. So the task force team must be mapped out so that we can catch up. And it's essential at a time like this. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. So in order to actively respond to it, the number of reviewers must be large, right? Yes, precisely. Actually, technology like AI, when it first came into our market, they have, in case of the US IP, IPO, they have their own department. I cannot write down any kind of application related with IT because I'm not an IT expert. And if you look at US government, they have special divisions in charge of AI, or uh, if you look at how they conduct evaluations for the patent applications for the AI. They have this regulation that states that more than three experts need to gather together and then conduct the evaluation. So in light of that, in Korea, we like the experts who can come up with the evaluation criteria setting and also conduct the evaluation. If you review the policy as well, AI technology and conversion technology rapidly improve in digital health or digital health care. When we evaluate, the first thing is cultivating the human resources and 
cultivating talents means someone who can understand the conversion technology who can come from the industrial sector or the patent attorney we definitely need to cultivate the talent thank you so much so in order to grow the venture form ecosystem like i said it should create some kind of cluster and based on the cluster innovation must come one after another so I have a question to Mr. Ku. Osong, Songdo are represented by a cluster in Korea. So you have a good knowledge of this kind of cluster. So like Boson via cluster, in order to grow further, what would be needed from your perspective? A few years ago, Ministry of SME and Startup benchmarked the US accelerator program and they spent 23 million won for the acceleration program. And I was part of advisory committee for this program. And a lot of advisors back then said that this is such a large amount of money, 23 billion in Korean currency won. In all, and in order to build the infrastructure in Korea first, of course, you need to build buildings and purchase equipment and some even said that it would be very challenging to collect all the great minds and high-skilled workforces whenever i make an investment in bioeconomy the always challenging part is that less i give you an knowledge from the candidate discovery up until i end i end the application the expertise that you require is too expensive than any other field, which means that unless you have a communication with the people around you, you cannot make any kind of product in the bio economy. For example, let's say that you're a clinician, you are, let's say that your specialty is internal medicine. Pediatric internal medicine is very much different from the adolescent's uh, internal medicine. As such, the communication between different departments is very critical. Creative Economy Center was made back in 2012, and companies went there to do the, some kind of incubation, especially as you know, also is a home to Ministry of S Safety and Drug, and there are central uh, control disease control center as well. And some program went well, and some program did went well. But one common feedback we received was that Boston or other cluster made such a success because they not only have infrastructure but good communication channels. Infrastructure here means hospital, hospitals, researchers, industry players. But given that, Daejeon and Seoul would be the right place for the cluster because they have an infrastructure. Second, the communication between very different subject matter experts. This communication is so critical because my experience tells that when I first made an investment in bioeconomy as a venture capitalist, actually it's quite difficult for us to make an investment because we need to study a lot and we need to be part of the medical community as well. But I thought that this is too fragmented. Non-clinicians, clinicians, chemicalists, and universities, hospitals, and indication-based experts are all talking different. But when I went to Daejeon, I had a chance to talk with the CEO of Orem, a company called Oin, and they had a researchers community and decided to have a frank communication without thinking any about anything about their titles and ranks. It was so open-hearted and I was quite a surprise because that is something I haven't seen anything before in Korea. And 7,000 bio-researchers are all there in that Facebook page and they do the seminar every week. They have different topics. For example, this month they are going to talk about the Korea Technology Finance Corporation's activities and they kind of invite a speaker from the corporation. So what I want to say is that infrastructure is critical but within a limited resources, you need to do multiple things. So in order to make that happen, subject matter experts need to have a right 
atmosphere for communication. This is not just a case in, in Korea, but outside of Korea. One positive note I can share is that that community in Daejeon spread it to Pangyo, Daejeon, Songdo, Daegu, Dongtan, Seoul. So it is being spread. And also even to Kaspru, the Korean American Biomedical Society in the US. So they are having regular communication between experts at the personal level, at the student level. They even give a career concert services free of charge. They invite students and do facilitate the communication. So the most important thing is this kind of communication culture. The culture should be for forced. But like I said before, that kind of professional services are all provided free of charge. And that kind of support is not being considered by the government supports. I mean government public agencies. So they are always talking about the infrastructure buildings, but they don't pay much attention to the communication. For example, U.S. has a lot of experts in the field of antibodies. So maybe Korean technology finance groups or corporation need to create that kind of communication group. And that communication group should be supported by the public agencies as well. So like I said before, the history of Korea is might not long or long in some sense, but still that kind of communication might 15 year experience tells that the communication should be done, but the number of the participants in every seminar is less than 100, which means that more people should be involved in it. And also, there should be some venue where they can freely share experience and knowledge to the fullest and create a network. That kind of sharing or networking atmosphere or culture is something that we need. Of course, it would be difficult to connect the dots between the infrastructure across the country fiscally, but still, we need to have a good discussion on how to make the right connection in terms of the communication, how to invite them to a specific venue, listen to them. And I believe that that kind of communication will ultimately help us to save a lot of cost. So as a private players, I think that kind of communication should be done, not just in the private sector, but in the public spheres as well. So instead of leading the discussion, please stay back and just give us support so that we can have a good discussion. But like I said, but still, here's a caveat. If this discussion is solely led by the public agencies, the number of the participants will be smaller and smaller. So I believe that the initiatives and the leading role should be done by the private sector and the public sector should be the helper behind the scene, I think. Well, in order to lead bioeconomy and also the source of bioeconomy should be communication or culture, the soft power. And in order to facilitate all of this, as you mentioned, knowledge transfer in a voluntary manner should be done so that the ecosystem should be comprised of expert researchers. We need to widen that. Those are the key. Well, Dr. Jim Philip, we'd like to ask you a question. What is the bio venture? What is your take on that from the perspective of OECD? What is a, a bio venture? Okay, I, I think I need to take a little bit of a step back here because as I mentioned earlier, um, this is a relatively new business. Um, biotechnology, we can see, started around about the 1980s but our world is dominated actually by ventures which are based on fossil and they've had huge numbers of decades and decades to perfect their ventures and their business models. All of their production processes are amortized. But a bio venture is, is, is very new to us. And as we've just been hearing, there are certain elements of this which are really critical. We've heard about the IP part. We've just heard about the need in communication. I was talking about the needs in physical infrastructures, but the, 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 the connecting people up is really important as well. Um, but for, for me, the, the bioventure itself, it's an ecosystem. It's not a, a, a company or a little cluster in isolation. It's about, as we just heard, the need for government support 
to get the thing going because it's in competition in the bioeconomy. It's in competition with uh, with fossil industries. So for me, a, a bio venture is all the things we know about uh, about company formation and business models. But critical to their success, I believe, will be this idea of communication, the idea of building clusters. But one which is really important, and we've mentioned it very uh, sometimes here, is the and this is for the public sector, is building this workforce. Because as I mentioned earlier, the, a workforce isn't about PhDs. Um, we had a workshop recently where we looked at the possibilities of uh, apprenticeships in, in, in bioeconomy, uh, and therefore for things like dairy lease, one day per week of, a, of a, a employees going to a local college, perhaps. So, the, so to, to build a bioventure, you, it's all about the people, and it's nothing like just about R&D. It's about all the way from a feedstock, say, to a product, but then it's also your customer base. So it's, it's all of that. It's all the way from the raw materials to the customers, and this is a, a very, very new way of doing things. Now, we've been doing farm for a long time, but the, the broader way I look at this in things like... Um, a higher value materials for engine, engineering applications, it's, 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 it's extremely new and we are, we are just learning as we go. But one, one of the things I'll go back to about the difference between the first and the second generation in bioeconomy, many of the first generation companies failed. And one of the, the biggest reasons for that failure was the inability to see the needs of scale up. And that's um, something where we are really, really against it, in the, against the, the fossil companies, is scaling up requires much more than R&D. So I would say that of all the things we've talked about, the needs for a new kind of workforce and a new kind of education is what we are requiring to make these bioventures work. 네, 감사합니다. 역시 사람... Thank you so much. So, like I said, workforce humans is very core piece of biotechnology. So, as a last piece of the second round of discussion, I'd like to ask a question to Mr. Yoon. We are talking about the future direction of bio industry. What is your view on the future direction from the perspective of the ministry? So, Director Yoon, well, well, frankly speaking, this is not my own personal expression, but rather it was a comment from SBVP Kim Hanjo of STEM Time. And I cannot express the Ministry of SME and Startups view, official view, but rather my own personal view. And also at Boston, we have had this roundtable discussion. As a person who took part in the roundtable, I have witnessed a certain view. So based on that, let me express my own personal view. Well, Senior Managing Director Gu jung -hye from LB Investment made a comment which I totally 100% agree because Lab Central in Songdo area, we are building it, but we should not regard it as a hardware because it is a place where ecosystem can start and critical mass should be formulated and then we can connect everyone. It should be a place of networking so that we can create our synergy and we can even carry out the clinical trial from the phase one to all the way to phase three or or. Uh, far away. So I guess based on these premises, we should do that. But networking doesn't require a lot of budget. Rather, by taking part in the formulations of the ecosystems together with the start-up companies, the community builders, well, I guess they need to take active participation. That's extremely important. I mean, give first culture should be built and based on such give first culture if somebody takes the initiative in leading such ecosystem everyone will follow i'm sure that there are needs to do that so mr lee from the own therapeutic he's the one who plays certain role and because of that a drastic change took place 
and we are actively promoting that we are cheering that and I believe that these are the critical things. I'm not only talking about building ecosystem, and this is not a research institute nor academia or a government-led institutions. We call this as uh, trilateral sectors that includes industry, government, and academia, plus hospitals, because hospitals take the initiative in bio industry. We went there and we realized that ecosystem is really solid and sound. We went to Harvard Medical School. There are about 18 hospitals that are all connected and at the top of that there is a MDH the Massachusetts General Hospital take the initiative and NIH funding is also provided here so in very restrictive small area located in Boston in Cambridge, everything's so well organized, such a sound and solid ecosystem are built. We don't need a huge space. We can have a very limited space, but still with a great networking and everyone active participation, we can build such a cluster or ecosystem in a very speedy manner. We need to work together with the hospital, which can sparkle the clinical mass participations and key members need to also take active part. And we can do that because there are a lot of general hospitals located in the metropolitan cities in Korea and definitely uh, space wise we don't need a big space so we can definitely build an ecosystem so how can we build such an ecosystem so I guess that's the foremost priority or key success factor in coming up with the cluster policies of course when we try to build such an ecosystem we hope to activate that and for that we did a lot of benchmarking and with the key man we are having an active discussions we will try to modify that what's clear is that it should be private led it should be market led that's unchanged spirit and also that's the directions of the current administration so everything should be led by the private and the market so i totally agree with that so once again, let me emphasize that government cannot lead everything. The main key players in the market need to take the initiative and do that. Once we decide to build that, Korea is known for fast action takers. We can do that. And also the role of the anchor company is important, especially in the bio sector. So the global anchor companies, of course, we need to connect everything and the uh, clinical trials or the bio sectors but also all the roles to be played by the anchor company how can we do that in korea well bio ecosystems if you look at the huge mega scale companies of course we have few in bio similar sector but mostly they are a manufacturing companies so Trolley or Samba or sorry Samsung Biologics they are not suitable to play the anchor company but rather Green Cross Korean company or SK Bioscience which can play the role of the anchor company because they are a leading company in the bio sector so they should take the initiative in building bio ecosystem and that can narrow down the gap that exists in Korea now for the clinical trials to for the drug discovery a massive investment is required a totally a different level of the investment is required in processing the clinical trials you know that starting from the phase one to phase three a totally different amount of the money is required especially the clinical trial phase three requires trillions dollars of money to be made as an investment we cannot continue to rely on license out and considering that bio ecosystem for pharma and for drug discovery once we build that i'm sure that we can take a quantum leap into the future and also come up with a blockbuster new drug discovery that's the way to go and i hope that korea can take the initiative and korean companies can play that fortunately if you look at the global statistic we found out that korea has increased its portion more than double score so in the clinical trials we can play a significant role we have been playing rather eu the trend if you look at that the role has dwindled but not in korea which means that the startup biotech companies that we are making investment they will scale up and in few years they will play a pivotal role in the future so we are looking in a positive note of those companies and we hope to connect the investment in a scale up way so that a smart 
capital should be uh, injected to this company. Now, regarding cultivating human resources, many people already made a comment. But as I mentioned, the academia, research institute, government, plus hospitals need to form the ecosystem. But the medical doctor uh, research researchers, we don't have abundant human resources. So we need a medical doctor with the background of the research. We need to activate and co actively cultivate them. The government policy-wise will try to promote that, especially technology-based research uh, university, they need to play important role as well. Especially in Korea, a lot of students aspire to go to medical school, and I believe that that kind of spirit can be another uh, pump priming to build bio ecosystem. C Korean government policy-wise, of course, we need to work harder in building bio ecosystem, and. I guess Korea's bioecosystem needs to be connected with the global number one to bioecosystem. When that happens, when the cross close cooperation happens, we can produce better result as Chief Park Sung, Park Sung Jin from Postco Holding mentioned. It's extremely important to strengthen the bioecosystem. For that there are numerous bio ecosystem in Boston or in other sectors. We need to work closely with the Korean uh, doctors working there or researchers, and definitely by strengthening them, we can do that. And Dr. Go from Genesco has contributed greatly for the license out. There are numerous cases, and when that happens, definitely it can provide a consolidated relationship with the Korean bio ecosystem. So once again, we really hope that uh, Korean American doctors play role as well. And also the tips located in 14 countries we can use as a hub and there can be another opportunity. So all of these that I mentioned are purely my personal view and uh, I really hope that we can come up with a better policy in the future. So the concerns that I have mentioned, we hope that the players will join in coming up with various agendas and coming up with the proposals for the future. That's all. Thank you. So you thought you said that your thoughts are a little bit unorganized, but you identify all the key points and pinpoint large investment, human resources, and connection to the global ecosystem. Actually, before I came here, I heard that you had a lot of concern for the panel discussion, but you are one of the people who had the greatest enthusiasm for this field, I believe. So we just concluded the second round of the panelist discussion, and let us move on to the final third round of discussion on synthetic biology. Because Last year in the U.S., executive order was announced by the U.S. government, which focused on the synthetic biology. Bio, a database biology is getting attention from the market, especially the synthetic biology. So we're going to talk about how the market is being formed, and Korea is very much focused on the growth of synthetic bio biology as well. So I'd like to give a floor. Whoever do want to talk about the synthetic biology, is there any volunteer who want to talk about the synthetic biology? So synthetic biology. The Mr. Jim Philip talked about the biofoundry, and like I said, I was a uh, semiconductor industry engineers when I was young, so I'm going to talk about how to grow this industry. Early 2000, because of the Asian financial crisis, many people decided to leave the company and build a non-memory semiconductor company and win IPO and market cap was enormous. And 20 years later, we are experiencing quite the same phenomenon. So I think it is worthwhile for us to look the, at the cases of the Taiwan who went through the same experience. TSMC is the foundry number one company. And behind of TSMC is many 
not high end like Qualcomm, but like medium quality companies in chip manufacturing field. Whether it is IT or semiconductor or bio product, founder is not about the hardware. You cannot just simply build a factory and expect that the product will come out. So there should be some designers as well. Bio founder likewise needs good quality designer like AI engineers. So that kind of comprehensive infrastructure is a precondition. Otherwise, you cannot just expect that the factory is built and there is something product comes out. No, that it would not work in that manner. But my one concern is that whenever I talk about the foundry, people always talking about the building, physical building, bricks and mortars, instead of talking about soft software. But I believe that the same amount of investment should go to not just the infrastructure areas but to soft software so it would be like a no memory version of the biopharmaceutical product so the software investment should as large as hardware investment and given that if you talk, talk if you see the korean synthetic biology market i'm questionable how much investment has been made to the designer part or software part i think there are minimal investment going on. So this means that we have a factory and there is no software who should be part of the factory. Like I said, Taiwan has TSMC, but there is a media tech behind TSMC. Media tech is a company that provides middle quality communication chips. And this company was able to grow because it was it had a good partnership with TSMC, but in Korea, of course, M&A is quite challenging in Korea, but that kind of M&A in Taiwan still does not happen in Korea. Let's say that back in 2000 or between 2005 or 2010, what if Korean bio pharmaceutical company can acquire those kind of chip makers? By doing so, library and designer infrastructure and human resources could have been secured as large as Taiwan, but that kind of M&A did not happen in Korea. Likewise, from the perspective, biopharmaceutical company, when you when you make a blueprint for the bio industry, please pay attention to software infrastructure, not just to hardware infrastructure like education, AI capabilities and you need to have the kind of comprehensive perspective when designing blueprint or design policies. Well, we've had a panel discussion until now, and I believe that we came up with one conclusion. Physical infrastructure, soft infrastructures are critical in developing bioeconomy. So far, we had had panel discussions and well, Senior Vice President Kim Hanjo, Dr. Shai Merse, Chief Park Song Jin, we'd like to give you a chance to speak up. Any comment? How do you feel about that? Any additional comments? Please go ahead. First of all, Dr. Shai Merse, any comment from you? Well, thank you. I, I, I'll talk about the last thing that was just mentioned, the synthetic biology. You can learn quite a bit from the Israeli experience in this. There was a new infrastructure lab that is uh, public-private interface set up uh, just a few months ago, maybe less than a year, called Allergene. It's a combination of a university, the Reichman University, together with a, uh, a business unit called Chai Labs, which was very much involved in COVID testing uh, during the pandemic and has established itself as a molecular biology center here in Israel. And using this business entity connected to a university and public funding from the um, innovation, uh, Israeli Innovation Authority, the whole field of synthetic biology was pushed forward, making sure that it's uh, business sustainable. So you have a business that carries all the risk. You have the university bringing the innovative part. You have the government overseeing everything and making sure that it's a, a um, nationwide, uh, call it a, an economic locomotive, a, a bio economy generator, looking forward into a very high risk field. Synthetic biology is very speculative. It changes uh, twice a week. 
what you used to do with viral vectors all of a sudden becomes uh, synthetically made and, and it changed, uh, the risk assessments change uh, every which way. And so the government will give an umbrella. It will say, mm -hmm. I will assist in this de-risking effect, but we will bring a business in. And at the end of the day, if this does not succeed, it's the business's pocket that hurts. So you give the motivation for the market, you bring in players like academia and you have the government de-risking. So I think that's a, an interesting lesson that if you do want to push forward on uh, synthetic biology, you could learn. Saying that, a major part of that project was physical infrastructure. It was setting up an actual lab, allowing for the companies getting service, infrastructure service in synthetic biology to have access to something that they would probably not purchase or have um, uh, ready access to while doing R&D. That's on the synthetic biology uh, area. Listening to the comments uh, before, I could also add that I totally agree with the analysis regarding ecosystem biocluster building. And I think, and, and you know better than anyone who the major players in your ecosystem would be. To recap on my talk, one of the things I showed was the different subsectors in biomed uh, industry. And, and I think we've heard quite a few comments here on AI and how to build, properly build. Uh, an ecosystem built on infrastructure and human capital. It's very important to understand that not all subsectors in the biomedical industry may be relevant to each and every market. So whereas in Israel, we, there's a lot of um, uh, emphasis on what you what you readily call bioconvergence here, putting together the engineering part and the software part, which are very strong in Israel, together with the medical part, which is also very strong here, that would put Israel at the top front of the medical device industry or the bioconvergent AI smart device industry, so to speak. Um, whereas in the pharma industry, we do not have a very prominent advantage over other countries like uh, the US or, or, or many countries in Europe as well. So um, if you do find areas in which bioconvergence are a leading point of innovation, cell therapy, gene therapy, uh, process development products, that's where you want to put your public money. The market works as it works. Anyone can start a pharma company and that's fine. But if your government funds go to where your natural assets in the country exist and you foster a cluster around that and an ecosystem driven uh, economic engine as a country, as a state, as an administration, you have better chances of properly utilizing public funds. I think those are my major remarks and I'll, I'll be happy to take more questions. 네, 감사합니다. 어, 이어서 저희 Thank you, Senior Vice President Kim Hanjo. Well, you have heard the discussions. Any additional comments from you? Well, the word that really pops up in my mind is diversity. When we talk about global market, we need to think about what's Korean like typical Korean things, but which means that we need to keep Korean stuff, but also live within the diversity, meaning the company wise, we need to make sure that diversity culture exists and mingling with the different races, different nationalities, people with the different ideas and thought, we need to mingle. And if our ideas conflict with each other, we need to make sure to compromise and also to adjust each other and then live harmoniously. When you hire foreigners, there could be various issues. Or if foreigners ha is hired by Korean company, there could be some challenges. Maybe they can they cannot speak Korean, they cannot use Korean software called Arehangul, and those kind of things could be regarded as another challenge. So when we talk about communications, it appeared in my mind. If we have 10 pages of English uh, documents, and if we can get review by a really widely known knowledgeable person, how fantastic that could be. Meaning, living within global market, it doesn't mean that we achieve growth by ourselves, but we need to make sure to embrace others within the concept of diversity. So once again, hiring foreigners, yes, it can cause some fears, yes. We admit that. 
even if we don't verbally express our views, this thought is deeply rooted in our heart and minds. We need to overcome that. Somebody mentioned about doing networking with the Korean American doctors. Yes, policy wise, it is important, but we need to outreach to the global market, which means that we need to enable Korean doctors uh, reaching out to the global market, maybe from academia or from industrial sector. We need to make sure to enhance the diversity, not only technology, but from the HR sector. We need to work on that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Park, the floor is yours. Posco believes that we don't do anything that can be done by others. So everything that can be by other people are outsourced usually. And all we need to do is to make a connection between ourselves and those outsourced experts. So for in case of venture capitalist, we outsource them to the best venture capitalist. And when it comes to bio, we talk with the CMO, CDMO, and we do communicate with those service pro pro providers to understand which one is the best service providers. But these all center around the CEO of venture firms because ultimately we are all here to create a unicorn company in order to create a unicorn company first you need to experience minus one trillion or minus unicorn firms if you are talking about the decacorn or even greater company you need to go through greater odds and difficulties and cd ceo from the sense of the startup company is very lonesome because he need to go through all those difficulties and alls. So every discussion should center around how to help these people who are challenging the impossible situation to make something possible. So I hope that those people can dream bigger and go outside, outside of Korea, starting from the Korean soil so we are having a lot of discussion on the policy support but we cannot represent the ideas of every ceo so the, my conclusion is that those who are equipped with entrepreneurship should be generated one after another in a continuous manner for example like Park Tae-jun, Lee byung those Representative CEO started the company back in their, when they were 20s and started the flagship company. Coupon Naver also uh, fed the Korean economy starting their businesses from their 20s. So in order to help them to make that happen, we need support for those entrepreneurship. I hope that young entrepreneurs can challenge themselves continuously and we need to support them so that they don't lose the spirit of entrepreneurship. That's what we do. The POSCO is helping the venture forum and we are trying to support the ecosystem. Let's say that we create a two trillion worth uh, university campus because we have a conviction that the company can be born from this and the market cap of this company will be greater than my company. Thank you. Well, gathering today and having discussion was great. I sincerely thought that it would be great if we can have a regular meeting like today. And now during the remaining time before we open the floor, I'd like to give last opportunity to the speakers and the discussant if you'd like to express any views. Dr. Jim Philip, any additional advice or comment if you have any? Yes, I mean, uh, I heard earlier about the need, uh, the the dual need for software, but also for hardware. And and let me say to the audience, um, starting in the 1960s and, and into the 1970s, people were talking about in education, the combination of mechanical and electronic engineering. And that was called mechatronics. And for some people, this was a crazy idea. But what's happened now? is this is the absolute basis of modern manufacturing is the is the, is how electronics interfaces with mechanical so let me put the idea to you that the biologist of the future will be still trained in molecular biology but will be able to code 
And this will be, uh, I think this will be in the workforce, a major transformation. Because when I grew up as a, as a microbiologist, there was very little mathematics in my education. And that's been a failing. But as I said earlier, what happened with the Human Genome Project was biology went from being data poor to being data too rich because there weren't the people that, which we called bioinformaticists to handle the workflow. So I, I, I strongly feel that this talk about the about software and the hardware part is going to be a little like manu uh, mechatronics and the transformation and the way that we make things. 네, 감사합니다. 그러면 저희 오늘 발제자 토론. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I think that is everything we can discuss between panelists members. So it is time for us to receive some question from the audience. Is there any question? If you have any questions, please raise your hand. Our staff will hand over the microphone. And also, if you have specific questions to the speakers or discussant, we will try to answer at the back. Hello, everyone. My name is Park Chan Su. I'm from Steppy. I have a question to Senior Managing Director Gu Jung Hui. Sustainable bio ecosystem, in order to build that venture capital, the funding is extremely important, especially the competitive companies need to receive a lot of opportunities. But at the same time, the companies that have no competitive edge, we need to kill them. We need to get rid of that. So here comes my question. Is Korean venture firms doing a proper job or the bio venture ecosystem? If you look at that, do you believe that we have a different approach? We need that. What What is your take on that? So it has been 20 years since I do the investment in the bio field, but as a third party, actually it has been 25 years since the beginning of the investment into the biotechnology because when I first entered the company, bio investment people was the community I joined from the very beginning. So pharmaceutical people or bio researchers were all included as analysts. And actually in 2016, Professors even went to our company as an analyst. So from 2016, I think we received some high quality workforce who have over 10 years of experience. So the whole venture capitalist, the quality of the venture capitalist, in, especially in the field of bio industry, has improved quite a lot. But I think the problem here is that. We manage a fund, so there is a market called exit market. So we receive the money from, for example, pension fund and manage the assets. And in Korea, the exit market, the only way to exit is going IPO. Out of South Korea, there is large M&A market, so you can expect there should be some virtue cycle. When the market is in a bad shape, you can go to the M&A and it is good. You can do the IPO. But from beginning from this, uh, from the previous year, because we don't have large M&A market, we have a kind of credit crunch issue in Korea in the field of bio industry. So we are having kind of difficult time these days. But to answer to your question, what about the environment we need to have? I mean, we haven't grown both in qualitatively and quantitatively because from at the inception, and the amount of the investment was just around 500 million with just two analysts. So the investment was quite small. And many people said that many people try to talk me out because that is too risky. But now everyone from the accelerator and analysts are all into this market. From the very beginning, like a seed stage, they purchase the technology from uh, outside of company and they are trying to create a special vehicle company to do something with this technology. So there are many people who are working as an investor and as a via accelerator as well. So market has grown as much like that. But one issue is that we don't have many anchorage. So 
multinational pharmaceutical. I mean, the Hanmi biopharmaceutical was expected to play a role of anchorage, but because of many issues, we don't have any anchorage company in Korea. Yuhan and many other company are helping bio startups to draw some investment, but that is not sufficient at all. In order to create a dynamic in the market, the dynamic should be created by one enablers, but we don't have that anchorage. But venture capital, like I said, has been successful in terms of quantity, but quality still we need improvement. Of course, we were helped by the ministry and we have so-called vaccine fund, but LPs, the Money source usually do not give a lot of money when there is a suffix bio. So we need more specialized funds, funds like vaccine fund so that we can have kind of exclusive investment for the bio industry. So in the long run, I believe the bio should be regarded as a one core piece of the Korean industry and it will do so, I believe, but the key here is how to go survive through this, these difficult times. And analysts, 1,200 analysts of my company, actually there are 2,000 employees in my company, but in the field of biopharmaceutical, the number is 200, and when compared to other departments, the portion of doctorate degree holders are the largest, but still, we need more people who have uh, vast knowledge in this field. Uh, so much knowledge so that they can be called as a veteran investment, but it will take some time to have that kind of veteran like analyst in my management company. Things got improved a lot, but we have a lot of room for improvement and it will take some time and effort to fill the gaps and survive through these difficult times. I hope that we can survive through and seize more opportunities and taking this opportunity I'd like to pay my respect to all the CEO of bio startups because I frequently communicate with them, but I think this difficult time will go on soon because there are a lot of opportunities in the market and people will do invest in your company. So please survive through until you can breed once again. Well. I'm an expert studying and pondering upon the policy related with the bio industry. We've had the panel discussion for more than 90 minutes. Thank you so much for joining us, those of you who are physically attending right here at the conference hall and also joining us virtually. The result of our discussion, I sincerely hope that it can reflect back to our policies. We will work hard. Thank you very much for joining us until the end. That concludes the panel discussions and Q&A. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lee Ryong Jung, and thanks again to our amazing keynote speakers and panelists here for today's fruitful discussion. Please give them a big round of applause once again. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time to announce the end of 2023 Step B Global Symposium. On behalf of Step B, I would like to also extend my gratitude to all the participants who have joined us both virtually and in person. Thank you, in thank you for investing your time with us. Wishing your health and happiness, I look forward to seeing you once again next year. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>